are some intangibles that those projections failed to take into consideration. The crowd was going crazy. There's not much in life that's better than that. You're listening to Garlic Fries and Baseball Guys on the 95.7 The Game Podcast Network. Hello there. Welcome back to the Garlic Fries and Baseball Guys podcast. Sam Lubman here as always with Joe Shasky. This is episode 64 of the podcast. 64 Shasky, the number of losses it feels like the Giants took in the last week and a half if you're going off of the the vibe on Giants Twitter right now or Giants Threads if uh if you're on that platform right now. Uh Shasky, yeah, just to get into it. I mean, it's been a rough last week and a half for the Giants they've had their first kind of rough patch since April but before I get into that let's talk about something good and that is Camille Doval has been named an all-star for the Giants this year he will be representing the team up in Seattle next week for the Midsummer Classic and uh I don't know did you see the the video that they did where they kind of they finally told him that he's going to be uh going to the all-star game yeah I thought it was really cool you know uh, this is a guy who's much deserving and if you look at the body of work that he's done this year, I mean, Sam, he's been excellent. I know he had the scuffled uh, appearance on Monday with the Logan Webb start, which was not the best moment for the defense behind him, nor for himself. I thought four or five things went wrong that inning. I thought the ball actually hit the bat on the guy that they said he hit my pitch. I thought yeah. that Wade made a horrible play uh, coming in to third base. You know, he should have just ripped that ball down the line to third base. I mean, there was a variety of things, and he got hit hard. But he bounced back yesterday with a big-time save, and so one, two, three. I loved it. Camillo's been awesome. What is there to say negative? Yeah, they really no, – I mean, again, guys like Camillo, they're always going to have their off nights. Every pitcher, no matter how good you are, is going to have your off nights. He uh, he described it as a fun little birthday present because, obviously, his his birthday was the next day. And funny how that seems to work out, you know. But, no, he really – he has been such – I think it, it, he's been a great success this year, no doubt. But he's really been, I think, a, a triumph for the Giants in terms of their development. Yeah. Remember, I always, I'll always remember back in 2021 when he came up and he had that meltdown in Colorado. And Gabe Kapler said afterwards, we're very proud of Camilo Duvall. And I just remember thinking, like, really? This dude is so wild. He gets hit hard. Sure, he throws the ball hard. I'm just not seeing it. And yeah, I used to make jokes. Remember, a couple weeks later, Later, the Giants were in Cincinnati. They put like 18 up on him. I'm thinking, oh, cool. We can see Camille Doval pitch today. You know, this is a you know big enough lead. And later that year, he's our closer. And last year, he's been the lone bright spot. And he's just from where he was just two years ago to where he is at now. It's truly quite an amazing step that he's taken. And yeah, the Giants should be very proud of, of how they've developed him. And people make a big deal about, oh, oh, he's not a Farhan guy. You know, Farhan inherited him. Well, you still have to develop these guys. And this this Giants current regime, they absolutely get credit for Doval uh, uh, developing into the closer that he is. And he has been the best part of what's been a, a bullpen that, despite some bumps in the road, but a very good bullpen. Let, let's say it's the next two or three years. Who's more important to the Giants, Logan Webb or Camilo Duvall? Wow, that's a very good question. I mean, I really kind of want to lean Webb a little bit just because your starting pitchers usually are kind of, they have a little bit more overall cachet than the closer. Um, but I mean, we've seen how I would, I, because I mean, you want to talk about, you know, how the Giants have won in the past. Well, the Giants won three World Series in five years with a different ace and a different closer every year. So I don't know, it, would it be a cop out if I said they kind of both have a similar amount of value uh, to this I team? Think that's forward? the point I'm trying to make. The point I'm trying to make is that he's very valuable to this team and yes. he's been unbelievably important to their success this year. And I also think how we view the team moving forward, just in general, organizationally, we talked so much about Farhan the last two years, Gabe Kapler. Just think about Logan Webb and Camilo Duvall and how important they are to this year's team and, and, and the franchise and the trajectory and maybe the optimism you have around them. And I look at someone like Camilo Duvall, as raw as he was two years ago, they deserve a ton of credit for developing him on the fly. Because it could have easily been just another random reliever, uh, you know, Reyes Morantes or, mm -hmm. you know, Guillermo Moto or, you know, pick the re the reliever who showed promise early on only to Derek not Wall. deliver. <laughs> exactly. So I think they deserve a ton of credit. Yeah. And finding a closer is very hard to do. I mean, we've seen yes. in the past, Shasky, I mean, since Rob Nen, 
the Giants, they, they could not find a good closer. They tried the Armando Benitez experience. Yeah. That was miserable. Remember, there was a Randy Messenger moment. Jeremy Accardo had the moment yeah. for a second. Uh, we thought we had it with Brad Hennessy. Uh, Brian Wilson took over for a while. But the Giants, they've struggled. You, you have to develop a closer internally, I feel. Yeah. Uh, the Giants had to relearn that lesson when they brought in Mark Melanson a few years ago. And Duvall, he's 25, I believe. And I'm not Just I'm not making I'm not making a comparison here, but he's putting up more saves as a 25 year old than Mariano Rivera was at the same wow. age. Again, I'm not comparing them. I'm not comparing them. Rivera was a Rivera. But when you talk about just how early on as early age, like he's a young closer putting up really good numbers. And I think you said it last year on this podcast, like it's very rare. You see a closer putting up the kind of numbers that Doval has been putting up at such a young age. So is a very, very positive uh, development here for the giants. Well, what is Sam, before you continue, think about where he was rookie one month into the, into the bigs, really one month into the bigs. And he loses game five with Cody Bellinger getting a single. Mm-hmm. And a year and a half later, he's named an all-star. He could have easily gone down the Felix Rodriguez route. You know what I mean? You lose in the postseason that way. Game five, ninth inning, Cody Bellinger, you can't get a ball over for a strike. And then you do, and he knocks one in against your rivals. The fact that he's here where he's at now, boy, he's got some, he's got some mental fortitude. And I don't think we talk enough about his mental guts. No, you re- we really don't. He's he's just got such a calm demeanor out there too now. Like in 2021, he almost kind of had that wide eye look. But now like you, you see him walking through the clubhouse. He's got the chains on. He's just got this such a cool, chill vibe yes. whenever you see Camille Duvall. He is just living his best life. And you could just tell like even after Monday night when he got rocked, he's still got a smile on his face, a twinkle in his eye. He's joking about how it was a birthday present that the Mariners gave him. That's the attitude you need to have as a closer. You got to be a little off if you're a closer. And I don't know, I wouldn't say he's off in the same way that Brian Wilson was, but he's definitely got that that attitude that you need out of a closer where he's got that short memory, he's got that fun attitude. It's all positive totally there. Agree. One thing it is not, one place where it is not positive on the Giants is uh, everywhere that isn't Camilo Tofal right now. Uh, yeah, what's up? Are you recording? Yes. Because I normally it gives me the timer in the top left. Sorry. Oh. No, I mean, I got the timer in the top left here, so. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. I apologize. I just didn't want to go on if we weren't recording. I apologize. No, no, no. Yeah. Thanks for that heart attack, though. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but uh, talk about the rest of the Giants, though, who is as positive as Doval has been. It's been the exact opposite for the Giants. Uh, since last Sunday, Shasky, when they failed to sweep the Diamondbacks, uh, they're hitting 191 in that mm. time. Granted, it's been a week and a half. You can play the small sample size card. That does not include last night, which maybe that's a good thing. Who knows how low it is now after that? That's the worst in baseball, Shasky, in that time. Uh, the bullpen, I think you're fine. We were worried about the bullpen usage and when that would catch up. In the last two weeks, the bullpen has a 470 ERA, which in part is because these starters are struggling. They have a 430 ERA in the last few weeks. Wow. And honestly, Shasky, over the last month, they're averaging less than five innings per start. You know, Logan Webb, Alex Cobb, they're handling a lot of the innings there. But, and again, also part of it is because they've been using openers and stuff like that. But it's it feels like the wheels are kind of, I don't want to know if you know, falling off is the right word to use, but the Giants are on some bumpy roads right now. And we kind of talked about this earlier this week on the Morning Rose, but is this, you're going to go through cold stretches every season. Uh, is this a cold stretch or are we seeing something more troubling developing here? I don't think they were as good as their 10 game win streak, yeah. but I certainly don't think they're as bad as three and seven over their last 10. Like that's yeah. what they are right now. I think they're somewhere in between and that might sound like a cop out, but yeah, they're injured a lot. They have a lot of guys who get injured. They have rookies who started off on fire and have cooled off a little, you know, um, Casey Schmitz won for his last 20. That's not good. But you're getting great contributions from random guys. Like last night, Wilmer Flores, three hits. You know, yeah. Wilmer's been on ice for a couple of weeks. So these injuries have given him an opportunity to actually get in there. Jock Peterson's had a down here. I mean, let's just call it what it is. Yeah, I've been great yeah. this year. You know, I don't think that's a knock. But on the other side, J.D. Davis has been excellent, right? So for yeah. every good story, I've got a bad story that I can relate. I do believe that right now, you know, Matos, Schmidt, This is going to be an opportunity for them to take a deep breath after the Colorado series, after we get to the all-star break, take a deep breath, relax, 
and get back to basics. That's what I want to see. Because big picture for me, I don't really care if they make the playoffs or not this year. Of course, I would love them to. I want to make the playoffs. They're a year away, right? That's mm-hmm. the way I believe them to be. When you only have two starting pitchers and one of them is Alex Cobb, you're a year away. But the development of Bailey and how amazing he's been defensively and how much better his bat's been than what it was in the minor league. Seeing Casey Schmidt play and get opportunities with the Estrada injury, which just sucks, just totally sucks for Tyro Estrada. Seeing Matos play center field and now with no Hanniger, he's going to play an extended period. I'm all about development and youth movement. So, yes, the record doesn't look great, but these are the valuable scar tissue that we're going to look at a year and a half from now the same way we did with Camilo Duvall, and we're going to say, I think they're better having struggled early on. I like that. I like that assessment a lot, especially when you kind of tie it back in Camille Duvall. Because, yeah, we are kind of seeing those struggles with Casey Schmidt right now. You're right. going to see those struggles with Luis Matos. Exactly. He's, you know, he's, he might not be the power hitter that maybe we once dreamed that he would be, but I don't think he ever profiled as that either words. Um, it's not all bad. Ryan Walker, I mean, he's taken his lumps in the bullpen too. Sure. Honestly, overall, he's been absolutely dynamic coming out of the bullpen for most of the year. Blake Sable, again, it's thing where we're seeing – Sable's players. been good, Sam. You have, no, he's great at the plate. Uh, leaves a lot to be desired behind it, but Agreed. even still, I, you, you, when you talk to guys in that clubhouse, they'll all say when it comes to what Blake Sables do behind the plate, he's getting better every start, and that I think is a that's the positives that you really want to be seeing with this team, and and that's a, a, a situation with the Giants that you didn't really have last year is when you're struggling, but you could still find positives. Last year the Giants were struggling, but you didn't have those positives you could look to with these younger guys. You know, with Casey Schmidt, he's struggling at the plate. The defense is still great, though, and yes. there's going to be, you know, plenty of opportunities for him to come. And part of that is because, and we got to get into some bad news here, the Tyro Estrada injury, which could not have probably come at a worse time for the Giants. It sucks. Just in terms of, it, it, it sucks. It really it does. does. It sucks. And I'm like here, I want to hear your thoughts, Shasky, just off the top. I mean, how do you think they get through this? I mean, you're looking through probably mid-August at best when Estrada comes back. Baseball, it has a way of working itself out. We were talking about it about a week ago. Schmidt started struggling really bad. He's been struggling for quite some time. And it's like, well, where's he going to find time? Do they drop him? And then boom, Estrada hurts himself. And Estrada was scuffling the last couple of weeks. I felt ever since he jammed his hand, he wasn't mm-hmm. the same. You know I don't what think I mean? he really was truly recovered from the wrist injury. Either. That's what I'm he, saying. He has been banged up a lot over the last yes. couple, the last few weeks. And I definitely think that that's factored into his performance yeah. a little bit. No, no doubt. But he's still been really good. And yeah. I think he's a catalyst at the top of this lineup. You're seeing them experiment. Like the, they had Wilmer Flores batting second. They've done Jock Peterson batting second. They've done all kinds of different variations of guys trying to bat in that Tyro Estrada <laughs> slot, um, which where they had him earlier this year. They're going to miss him. He's a catalyst offensively. Defensively, I think Casey Schmidt's going to get the, the bulk of the, of the opportunities. The problem is, is that when you play Crawford every day at shortstop, he wears thin too. Right, yeah. so, the depth's definitely going to be tested, and that and I, think, I don't think that Brett Wisely is a major league baseball player. I mean, no, he, I think he's capable nah. on defense. I think he can play a capable second base. Uh, the bat's not going to be there. No. Replacing Casey, Sch- not Casey Schmidt, replacing Estrada is going to be difficult. Chasky, yes. him, we we talked about this before. The one-two punch, Lamont Wade Jr. and Tyro Estrada has been great for the Giants. Uh, those two atop the lineup are a big reason why the Giants' top two lineup spots are ninth in baseball in OPS. They have a 799 OPS at the top of those top well, two and, spots. And Sam, all I know is that the guy was leading the team in stolen bases. So they're missing a guy that can actually run the bags out there. Oh, like, yeah. which a team that's station to station is desperately needed to have a speedster out there. I just felt like he was one of those dudes. Having him around Luis Matos was going to help that youngster. Yeah. I mean, Shawty, he'll still be around. I mean, it's not like, you know, they, they banish him somewhere else while he's on the IL. He'll still be no, around. He'll still be talking to guys. But yeah, I mean, that, that top two spots in the road in the Giants lineup been dynamic for them. Lamont Wade Jr., Tyra Strada, they've really been doing a, doing a great job setting the table together. Uh, the 364 on base percentage that the top two spots in the lineup has is fifth best in baseball. Is He's got really? a great table. So replacing them, it's wow. going to be interesting to see how they do it. Uh, after Estrada, Jock and Wilmer have taken the most plate appearances in that number two hole. Is it perfect? No, but when you consider how they platoon them, it's not, it, it, Damn, I it, hate it. worse. Damn, um, I, hate I think it. that's probably what you're gonna see. You're gonna see a lot of Jock and Wilmer hitting in that number two spot now with Casey Schmidt manning second base now for uh defensively, which so let me let me throw something at you before you go. 
Yeah. I don't like Jock batting second for a variety of reasons. I want mm-hmm. him driving in runs later in the lineup. I don't like Wilmer really right there, even though Wilmer does get on base. He's too station to station me. Move Matos up there. Let's just see it for a couple of games. Not one game. Let's see it for a couple of games. Put him in the two hole. If this is going to be your center fielder moving forward, uh, and I'm not saying like, hey, he goes over 12 over a three game span. You stick with it. Like, give him an opportunity. Give him a couple of days in a row, and let's see what happens. Why not? This is an yeah. opportunity. No, I agree with you. I think this is the the beauty of this season is that you know you can rely, you can kind of fall back on, you know what, if we can't win games, let's at least develop. So you know what? Yeah. I like the idea. Put Matos in the two hole. And it's like, you know what? Camille Duvall, you had to sink or swim one time at one point you ended up swimming. Luis Matos, this is your time. It's sink or swim. We're going to put you in the two hole and show us what you got. 